Yo, what's good with you? Back in black with another enlisted video. Today we have another gameplay analysis playing as a Japanese in the Pacific campaign. Um, before I get into it, if you guys are new to the channel and you love shooting games just like me, make sure you aim for that like button and uh, shoot that subscribe button as well. It'll help you find better teammates and improve your skill based matchmaking. Today's um, analysis is actually a tale of perseverance because one, I did not really honestly think we were going to win this game at any point, and then two, it's a tale of actually knowing when to do something in particular, like uh, use a plane or when to switch out of a plane, uh, when to use a bombing run, and how to analyze the situation in general. So, like I said, you can see we are obviously over here attacking the first point, and um, the bombing run that I did use, clearly it wasn't that effective. It only got me about five kills, but what it did do is that it funneled all the enemy into the building so from that point I knew that it was useful for me to switch to an assaulter which had a lot more close range capability and a lot more um, ease clearing out objectives that are in tight confined buildings like this one right here and uh, as you can see we already did that pretty much my entire team was sitting on the point first point down and for some odd reason they decided to continue to uh, push us even though it would have been wiser for them to fall back so I think that's kind of dumb on their part but it gives me the opportunity to uh, showcase how good the MP28 actually is in this campaign with that 50 round magazine and actually sporting some pretty good range as well so um take this in and understand that yes the Japanese weapons are not that good in comparison to the Americans but they're still pretty viable if you know the range that you should uh, be using said weapon at so uh, like I said I use it effectively so much so that I run out of ammo and I just had to go for the melee he knocked me out right there I decided to come back in the plane for the second point and uh, you will see why momentarily when it comes to being a pilot, I know 9 times out of 10 we have half a mind to spam need enemy coordinates over and over again from the time we are flying to resupply to the time we are actually coming back to the point. But just for not being, for the sake of not being annoying, I feel like it's more advantageous to ask for enemy coordinates when you are um, maybe 2,000 to 15,000 meters from the uh, actual point that you are attacking at the time. And if you're ever in a situation where you get horrible teammates who never ever mark where the enemy is or where they're coming from the piece of advice that I could give you is that it is usually smarter to drop your bombs either slightly behind the enemy point or maybe uh, if you can if you have good eyesight anyway you can aim with your uh, L2 button and kind of just look for the small little ants running around and then you'll know specifically that's where they are flanking from or coming from and from that point it's pretty easy to get 15 plus kills on every bombing run that you uh you know try to uh do and um of course that's only if your teammates are not marking enemy targets for you or helping out at that point it's kind of up in the air which you really should do in a plane or if it's even worth being in a plane in general because i have teammates very often who will stay in a plane even when it is not advantageous to do so which will in in turn cause your team to lose because that's less manpower actually fighting for the point so you see uh, we got down to 388 still didn't have it yet I'm like okay there's really no reason for me to be in here unless I'm just farming kills and not trying to win which I'm always trying to win whether I'm getting a lot of kills or not so bailed out um, I died anyways but miraculously we actually caught that point so I give my teammates credit for that they pretty much did that without me having to actually be on the ground myself which is very rare I decided to flank down the river for this uh, fourth point um, and unfortunately I, I didn't know that they spawned from that direction so I kind of um, lost my engineer off rip to BAR which is very very OP on the American side unfortunately for that squad I have way more uh, I have way superior aim so I dispatched them and then of course they get reinforced by a half track luckily I'm using my premium squad they come equipped with um, explosive packs two or three of them and if not that they have TNT as well so decided to uh, make short work of that half track as well what I, another thing I don't know if you saw um, when he was killing my the rest of my squad what I did is I ducked down in the water so he couldn't see me you can always use that as concealment which is like essentially you could call that me thinking on the fly because I don't think most people think like oh I should probably dive down in the water to avoid the bullets from being seen but it actually bolded well for me in that situation unfortunately I get sniped from way off to the side of the map even though my teammates are also running in that area as well so that's unfortunate but 
we are moving up on the point, getting closer. One thing you should always do if it is safe to do so. Normally, I keep my squad behind me where it's safe for them and they won't die automatically for being the worst AI ever. But if you actually have a portion of the uh, point clear, you should definitely move your squad onto that area. Because the more bodies you have on the point, the faster you will catch it. And of course, the faster you can do that, the less time the enemy will have to reinforce, which they are, which they are trying to do right now. But um, it didn't really work out in their favor. And the reason that I'm playing with such uh, tenaciousness, I guess you could say, is because again, we were at 388 not too long ago. Right now, we're sitting at 325. Um, this is pretty much, we have maybe one, two, or maybe three opportunities to catch this last point. From that, For that reason, it, that's why I basically caught it in the bombing run. It can do one of two things. It'll either kill all of them, or it'll force them off at a point. That's a that was an amazing nade. I don't know if you guys saw that either. That was top notch throw. But yeah, neither here nor there. The bombing run is essentially used to either kill them off at a point or keep them from getting on it. And um, I don't know if like my team just has a hard time knowing whether it's a friendly or enemy bombing run. But a good way to tell is you just gotta look at the direction of which the um, planes were coming from. If the circles are like facing a direction where you initially spawned from at the beginning of the game, that's how you know it's yours. If it's coming the other way, that's how you know it's the enemies and you should avoid it. Uh, clearly, they're doing a good job avoiding it right now. They built a rally point under that destroyed hut, which is actually really smart on their part. Uh, and I just so happened to be going on the streak with my bolt action rifle, so that was convenient. And you'll see the bomber running the dropping right now, literally not getting not one kill. But like I said, what that tells me is that it's safe for me to run onto the point. So that's exactly what I decided to do. Unfortunately, it seems like um it seems like I'm the only one who has this idea because you can see a bunch of teammates up there and you would think to yourself, like, what are y'all doing? <laughs> this is we only have 213 lives left. Y'all should probably be attacking with a little more uh vigor and ferociousness, but it is what it is. This is the point where I definitely felt like, okay, yeah, we definitely lost this game, but you know, I'll let you guys uh, see what happens next. I, I run out of ammo. I'm essentially just sitting on point by myself fighting with a pistol, a Japanese pistol at that, which I don't think they are necessarily known for their uh, usefulness or effectiveness. But yeah, man, look like look at this. This is horrible. Like, where is everybody at? So this, this is essentially me just trying to hold it down by myself and just contest the point because that's really all I can do. And uh, we got 175 lives left. My bad. Essentially, this is our last opportunity to try and catch this point. And I do want to throw another piece of advice out here. Uh, phosphorus grenades are extremely useful. You obviously want to throw that on the enemy side of wherever they're crowding up at. It'll make them disperse or kill them, one of the two. And then essentially, that's room for you to run in while they're all discombobulated and whatnot and uh, clear them out with your uh, weapons or favorite weapon of choice, which I understand not everybody is the biggest fan of bolt action rifles, but whenever you do land a hit, nine times out of ten it's going to be a one hit kill. So the Japanese, like I said in other videos, excel in that area. So if you have good aim, typically um, it'll be easier for you to play as the Japanese as opposed to other factions who typically rely on automatics. So I start getting flanked. You see that grenade off to the right. He kills about pretty much half my squad. I'm like, okay, I'm mad. I throw in the rifle grenade, he tries to flank, boom, I get lucky. Normally rifle grenades let me down, but in this sequence, they actually were extremely useful and pretty much saved the game for me in this, in a sense, because my team finally decides to get on point, so I do want to applaud them for that. I don't know why they have to wait till we're like sub 100 lives to actually have a sense of urgency, but it actually helped us win the game so you know they helped me out when it mattered the most and I do want to applaud them for that when you look at the score here and you look at how their top six players were pretty much better than um, the majority of my team only me and the guy in second place I would say oh well, no there's a guy in third place who built 20 structures I wouldn't I don't know if he was doing rally points or not but it worked out for the best thank you for watching